Hey everyone, welcome back to another Workflow Wednesday. Great to see you guys out there. Chuck, how's it going? Mark, great to see you in chat as well. With this week's Workflow Wednesday, you guys know me. I am Fusion Phil over here at JetCAD Cam. If you don't know me and you're new to my channel, feel free to stay around and check out some of our other content as well. Always, if you learned something in this video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. So let's go ahead and jump into everything. So as of right now, I think you guys can hear me quite well. I went ahead and shared my screen. I could see myself on the other screen here. Everything seems to be checking out. But the first and foremost thing that I would recommend that if you're looking to import tool holders into Fusion, now I'm going to walk you through this, is you are going to need this link. Make sure that link works on your guys' end real quick. This is going to take you to the article on Autodesk's forum on how to do so. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys the crash course on this as well. We're going to make a couple of adjustments as we go. But as you can see here, what I need to do is I need to install Fusion Essentials. Now, if you're new to GitHub as a whole, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to download this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click download zip. And what that is going to do is that's going to put me in my standard download folder on my computer. Now, I am going to open said downloads folder if I can pull it over on my other screen here. And as you guys can see, we're going to go ahead and extract that. Now, where you extract this to is going to be very important on your guys' end. I want to make that very clear. I'm going to leave mine in my downloads folder. If you remove it once we import it from your downloads folder, it will break the tool. So as you guys will see here, inside of Fusion now, we're going to go ahead and shift gears. We're going to go ahead and get that utility to work. So we're going to go utilities, add-ins scripts and add-in. And then on the add-in side, we're going to hit this little plus sign. Now, again, by default, there is a location on your computer for add-ins, or you could navigate to where you stored yours. I would recommend moving it here. But again, for example purposes, I'm just going to go grab that folder directly. As you can see, I've gotten an error right off the start. So the reason why I got that error, let's go ahead and jump back in there to my downloads area is I need to go one level deeper and hit select. And again, I'm still getting that error here. So identified, let's go ahead and try that one more time. We're gonna go back to my downloads. Let's go two levels deep and hit select. And that time it works. So you do have to be inside of the main folder. And what you see here is we have the Fusion's Essential plugin now. So as you guys are gonna see, I'm gonna hit run. Next time I start up Fusion, it will be here by default. So as you can see, Nothing has happened or has it, right? So what you'll notice is if we go back into our modeling environment, we're going to go ahead and see Fusion Essential Main up here at the top. And you're going to see why this is important here in a second. So let's go ahead and shift gears again real quick. I'm going to pull back open Chrome. Now, based on what tool you want to use, I'm going to go ahead and use a Rego fix right here. Is we are going to download a step drawing in this case, or a step model STP. And that is what we're going to import into Fusion. One other thing that is going to be very valuable is I need the PDF drawing of this tool. And the reason for that is I'm looking for something that along the lines is called a gauge length, which is from where it's going to sit in the machine to the tip of the tool. Now on this specific Rego fix, it does utilize leaves or collets that go inside of it. So what is going to be super important is when you put your tool in this thing that you either model it with that collet in there or we make sure we use, of course, the right gauge length. Jeff, I see you out there. Great. Thanks for joining us today. But again, what we're looking for, like I said, is 3.5 inches is the one I'm going to use. That is going to be my gauge length of my tool or my tool holder when we set that up. So again, let's get back to Fusion. I've already imported this, so I'm going to go ahead and open it up. Now, this is a solid model of a tool holder. Pretty simple, right? So if we go to our Fusion's Essential plugin, and I'm going to hit the Add Tool Holder button, it's pretty straightforward. We need to select what one we want. We need to select the access, which if you're a lathe guy at all, you know how to select an access using a cylinder. And then lastly, I need to select my end face. So again, this is going to be where your tool and everything is going to set. We're now pointing it in the correct direction to use. And then from that, you could plug in more information to be utilized at a later date. 
A very important thing that you're going to want to do here, of course, is you're going to want to make sure that we put this in the right library. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this in my shop crib new area. And just like that, it's telling me that we've uploaded that tool. So let's verify that we have that tool now. So if we jump over to manufacturer, we go into our tool library. And as you guys are going to see in my shop crib new section, I have that lovely new tool holder. Now, pro tip here for any of you out there, that black line technically represents where our gauge line is on our tool holder, right? So I would like to set that proper. And I've seen this before with people that are importing tools that the gauge line is where it's going to set in the machine. So again, you could set your gauge line. There's a million things being calculated here. As you can see, it's calculating its way down. Now, I have a tendency in some way, shape, or form to always screw this up, but I'm going to go ahead and throw parentheses around everything. If I can highlight everything. Give me a second here. We need to go all the way back to the beginning. Or you know what would actually work better is we're going to go ahead and jump to the beginning in a little different way. I think you can page down to get to the front. And not learn something new today. I don't think we can go in and edit that expression at the moment. You all are just going to have to wait for me to, right? The luxuries of doing things live. Now, you could plug that information in, or as you guys are seeing here, is we actually have the ability to toggle moving it down as well. So, what would have been easier, as you guys can see, is we could actually go through and toggle wherever that is going. Again, I'm pulling this from dimensions from the tool, but it is very important to set your gauge line so that whatever that length ends up being is correct when we actually run this in a machine. Let's go ahead and shift gears now real quick. Uh, jump back to some other YouTube content. I think I have, where is one of my milling projects? This is the fun as somebody was asking in chat that I went ahead and jumped in and didn't realize I created a live stream for 11 a.m., I failed to prepare. But let's get this opened up here. We'll give it a few more seconds. As you can imagine, stream live to all your guys' stuff. And I don't think I've opened that file in probably two weeks. But if it, there we go. Well, let's go in and edit one of our tool paths, right? So I'm going to go in. I'm going to select my tool. Again, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put that tool in the machine. I'm going to edit my tool here, giving me that holder. So again, we're going to go into our holder and I need to find that tool holder. So again, we're going to go ahead and minimize down and see if we can find our holder. There's my shop crib new, select my holder. And then from that, let's go ahead and see what's going on here. We have that selected. We have our cutter itself defined and we are getting an error based on cutting data. I probably picked the wrong tool at the end of the day that is missing tons of speeds and feeds. So let's do this. I am going to avoid this problem and grab a completely different tool. So again, as a lot of you guys know, this is pretty standard in my book that I go in and pick something with a dilemma or a problem. For two for two today, maybe we can get the hat trick or I could go back to yours truly's favorite, the half inch end mill that never lets us down. We're going to edit that tool. Again, all I'm trying to do is add the tool holder here that we can visually see. And if you notice, before I selected that other tool holders, gauge line was very important. Again, wrong tool holder for the situation. But I think you guys are going to get the idea of why that gauge line is so important, especially when we go in and do our machine simulation. So as you guys can see, it is very easy to import a solid model once you have that plugin and you set up that plugin, of course. Again, we're seeing that gauge line of the tool mounting in our machine, meaning it looks perfect. So again, if you guys have had that problem in the past, that's how you could adjust that gauge line. But that was simple enough to bring in a solid tool holder. Now, there is additional settings for a lot of you guys out there that are unfamiliar with setting up a plugin inside of Fusion. In the case of who's developed this one, you do have the ability to toggle on, toggle off stuff based on the build and the way that you want to utilize those holders. So guys, I see a lot more of you guys jumping in here. Hopefully you guys go back to the start and watch this video. Let me know how you feel about this video. As you guys know, it's not what you know, it's who you know. You know Fusion people over here at JetCAD Cam. We're happy to bring you guys content as well. If you guys have any content, you can go ahead and leave us a comment down below. 
if you felt something today that you want to give more than just the like or subscribe, you can always buy me a beer and or steak or even buy Fusion currently on promo, which I don't think I have a promo banner made for you guys. I don't. So you can buy Fusion on sale 30% off. You can also buy a support package or hourly training online right now from us directly as well at 30% off. So guys, have a great rest of your day. Thanks for coming by.